Hey everyone, Kevin from 9 millimeter here with Battle Drill 6. Uh, I want to talk a little bit today about backup guns, and uh, the big question is do you even need one, but, uh, and then what kind of situations would those play into, and then how to pick, a, uh, how to pick your backup gun. So, uh, this is not like an end-all be-all to, uh, to backup guns, you really need to get out and take a class, uh, but it should give you a quick uh, little once-over on, on kind of maybe what you need to be looking for. So, <clears throat> first reason that you may need a backup gun is to, uh, to arm another person. This is one that's kind of often overlooked, but say you're with your spouse who doesn't like to carry their firearm, or there's an off-duty cop, or a, uh, a military member there, I anybody with firearms experience that could uh, assist you in an active, duty situ or an active shooter situation, uh, and they don't have their firearm on them, uh, you could provide that with them, and that's uh, instantly a force multiplier for you uh, to eliminate your threat. Um, <clears throat> so, a, uh, another reason to have one is uh, in case you can't reach your primary weapon. So let's say, for example, somebody's coming at me and they've, they've tackled me to the ground. Uh, if I'm on the ground, I may not be able to reach my primary weapon. So a backup gun, you know, maybe around your ankle or in your pocket, uh, it may be the only choice at that point in time, especially if I'm on my back wing on the ground. Uh, an angle gun may be perfect right there for you to get, um, <clears throat> pending whether you can get your pants up or your, uh, your pant leg up to, uh, to, to grab it and to draw that weapon and, uh, and fire it. So it's, it, there's no guarantee that it will work, but uh, it's significantly more of a guarantee if you have two guns as opposed to one. So the other thing that people talk about is, well, you know, if you have a malfunction. Well, the reality of it is that's why we do these tap rack drills and, and different uh, type one, type two, type three malfunction drills is so that if we do have a malfunction, we can clear it quickly and, uh, and, and drive on from that malfunction um, because that's probably going to be faster than you drawing your, your secondary, your, 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 your uh, alternate firearm. So uh, that isn't always true, and it's not always going to be the case. You know, if you carry a pocket pistol and you tend to have your hand around that pistol, that may be your, your quickest weapon, and that actually may end up being your primary weapon because it's so much faster. You know, if I have a, a pocket pistol in right now and I want to draw that pistol, I can get that out uh, in, you know, a half a second and uh, get two shots at a three meter target uh, pre pretty quick. So uh, the, depending on the situation, the, um, that, the, that may arise that, that, that that's actually your primary weapon. So you do want to look into those as well. Um, but so malfunctions being one, you know, you, you, being able to reach your primary being kind of another, and uh, then like I said, arming somebody else. So let's talk a little bit about how to, uh, how to pick your, uh, your, your backup gun. So, First here, you know, kind of an example is this old, uh, the old five shot uh, Snub Nose 38 Special. So is it a great backup gun? Nah, maybe. It would probably do the trick, you know. The, uh, the best caliber to ever use in a, in a gunfight is A, the one that you have on you, and B, the one that you can put two in the chest with. So that's, uh, that's really what we're looking for. Um, so is this, is this necessarily the best gun? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say yay or nay on it. What I will say is that I carry this one plenty of times and never would have felt, uh, undergone, uh, it had it come up that I, that I needed to use this in an altercation. Um, that being said, it's, it may not have all the advantages that you want in a backup gun. Because when you look at this, this is five shots. It's five shots of 38 special. And uh, you can talk to the, the old adage that the definition of an optimist is, uh, you know, a person with a five shot revolver and a, uh, and a speed loader. So uh, it's, it's, it's a lot slower, significantly slower than a, than a semi-automatic would be. Um, but they tend to not jam up quite so much on things like pocket lint and stuff like that. But uh, that goes uh, more into the quality of the firearm that we're looking for. So the, uh, the gun that I typically carry is going to be this uh, Glock 26. So uh, it's a great firearm, great pocket size firearm. Um, it's, uh, as usual, it's loaded. But uh, the, the, the huge advantage to this is that it allows me to use the same mags as my, uh, my Glock 17 which is my primary firearm. So I don't have to carry a spare mag or spare ammo for this one. I carry my main mag uh, of spare ammo and then I can rotate simply between those and, uh, and have a setup like that, which is a, a huge advantage when you talk about things that we carry on us every day. So when we talk about a pocket knife, a flashlight, our backup gun, our primary gun, our wallet, our keys, yeah, you know, a watch, everything that goes into what we wear on a daily basis, um, Carrying another magazine can get cumbersome. Carrying another firearm is extremely cumbersome. Uh, we just have to uh, decide whether we want to justify that uh, and, and and have the the, the added uh, capabilities there, or whether we want to uh, uh, to assume some risk 
and have, I guess, a more comfortable lifestyle um, for, uh, for kind of lack of a better term. Um, <clears throat> so that's one of the advantages. Is like I said, the, uh, the magazines are, are interchangeable. The other big advantage is that this is a 10 round magazine. It's a standard round magazine. So 10 round. I can get an extended one that doesn't extend much past that and uh, it gives me what, another one or two rounds for it. Um, so it's, uh, it's got a lot more capacity than that, than that five shot revolver does and it's got the ability to be reloaded very quickly and, uh, and be ready to, to get into action again. So kind of some things to consider whether you want to go with the revolver or the semi-automatic. I choose the semi-automatic, the revolver, uh, it's not really, I don't carry it much anymore. I think the, uh, you know, the, 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 the day of the revolver is kind of passing us by. Um, there are some viable uses for it. Um, I, you know, that's my, that's my woods gun when I go hunting. That tends to be what I carry uh, as an old 357 Magnum. Um, but the, the day of the revolver is probably setting as far as a tactical or practical pistol. Um, now, I'm not, again, saying that that's the end-all, be-all for it. There definitely are situations to where it's got its advantages. Uh, but I think that uh, the majority of combat pistols uh, are gonna, you're going to see are going to be uh, some, some form of semi-automatic for just that ability of being able to, uh, to change magazines and, and get more ammo in the gun a lot quicker, uh, as well as, like, like I said, the interchangeability of the magazines and, uh, and the size of them. You know, this is a fairly big, I guess, backup gun. Uh, although I do know people that carry full-size backup guns, um, but most people will take some type of little pocket pistol, you know, like a Ruger LCP or you know, a Six Hour P238, something along those lines. Uh, it's a much smaller pistol, and uh, the, uh, the, that smaller pistol is, has a decent amount of capacity. It's smaller than either one of these, the 38 Special or the 9mm, and uh, they, they, depending on the quality of the one that you get, they're reliable. Now, I'll go so far as to say that, you know, I don't think Keltac or uh, 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 the Springfield XDMs, uh, neither one of those are guns that I would trust my life on. I'm not going to get in a pistol debate, but I would not trust my life on those guns. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'm a huge Glock fanatic. I love Glock. I think uh, 1911s make, make, uh, have some nice firearms, um, but I'm, I think the Dawn is setting as well on the, uh, on the 1911s as far as... Uh, whether whether we're going to keep using those for tactical pistols, just one man's opinion. But uh, take it for what it's worth. I think striker fire pistols are probably the way of the future with, uh, or the way of now even with with uh, tactical pistols. So I want to thank you for uh, for checking out this video. Uh, I challenge you to uh, to post something in the comment box. Uh, let us know what you think. Let us know uh, whether you like to carry the uh, the revolver, the the uh, the semi-auto, kind of your reasons why. And, you know, if you think I'm completely dead wrong with uh, with my comment on XDMs or Keltex, please tell me why. I'm more than willing to change my opinions, and I'll post a video about it later if I do. Um, I just uh, I need the uh, I need the feedback because I have found them to be you know complete crap. And uh, I think when people train hard enough with their weapons, they'll find that all weapons will fail. Um, quality ones will fail less. So. Again, thanks, and uh, please uh, like us on Facebook. You can check out our website at uh, battlegirl6.com.